Hello, everyone. Hello, are you guys still there? Hello, I'm here. Okay. Okay, great. Time. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, sorry about that. I had I'm here. I'm here, Professor. Yeah, I was uh, delayed at my doctor's appointment. So I'm back. So let's uh, proceed for the next couple of hours or so. Uh I'm pretty. Uh, I'm not sure if you uh, noticed that I have made the first assignment. Uh, probably you already uh, have seen that. If not, please look it up. Uh, it is. Uh, it's a head up assignment. I will be discussing the same issue later, maybe in this lecture or later. But hopefully, uh, if you have made the progress with it, that's great. Otherwise, I can extend the. Uh, the time for that. Let me check if any of you had seen my assignment. Uh, hello, Professor. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, can I ask you a question about the assignment? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I've been doing it, and I'm kind of just stuck. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so is there like just three major questions that you want us to answer? On it, like, I've been, I see that she said you wanted to show the K map, the water cardinal map, or the three of the full three bit uh, adder. I yeah. did that, but it's just the design of the adder using add in OR gates and in OR gates. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, how would you want us to design it? Like, do you want us to just screenshot like something we make off a website? Uh, not of the website i just want you let's let me show you uh, uh is my slides are visible to you yes okay here is the uh, the full adder for two digits mm -hmm. and, uh, that's with and exclusive or mm -hmm. uh, there is i have another design using kmap uh, with exclusive or okay so this is one it's a full adder for mm -hmm. bits, which is two inputs and uh, carry uh, this is and exclusive or I think there probably I made a mistake I said either and or 
you could use and or uh, exclusive or just like this like this design which i had here so you bring the uh, inputs a b and then you find the c i don't see where is my c here oh it's right here mm -hmm. c so there you will have a b c these are my digits my numbers and then you have the carry n1 carry n2 so you have five here and then here you will do what you get out of the k map so your k map design will uh, will give you the uh, the circuit so actually you will have the the s and the c1 and the c2 so you have function for each one of these uh, inputs as well as the outputs are going to be two of them are going to be input into the second stage so once you do the design you will have the s carry one carry two they are two carries then you will see how you can uh, uh, design that with the logic gates and exclusive or or okay pretty simple and if uh, I think at the end of this lecture, if I have time, maybe I will, uh, I will go through that. Uh, but if you uh, finish it uh, before, maybe even after I discuss that, uh, it will be okay. 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 All right. So, so okay. So far, we have dealt with what we call the ripple carry adder, and last time we did uh, discuss the issue how the timing uh, is uh, impact the ripple carry because if you have a full adder here so for this carry one has to be generated uh, before this full adder here uh, fires then c2 needs to be uh, to be generated by fa2 and then it will be fed into the next adder and so on so the propagation of the carry from C0 all the way to C3, it has to go through these stages. We call them T0 before you start, T1, T2, T3, T4. And then you will add these until you find the final solution. And if you have, instead of 4 bits, uh, 8 bits or 16 or 32, 32 bits is the uh, common technology which has uh, preceded our current technology. Current technology has 64 bits in the ALU, which is supposedly very fast, but if you think about it, uh, 64 bits, if to this guy will propagate 64 times before you go to the end, so two numbers, any, any addition, A plus B, is going to take 300 times 64, which is 19.2 microsecond i think that's what i calculated last time for one single ad and that's a lot of time that's big time despite the fact that your speed at each full adder is very high speed pick a second is very high speed it's much faster than nanosecond much faster than micro or milli or a second pick a second is 10 to the minus 12 uh, of the second you have six 12 zeros before the one that's very, very short period of time. However, if you are doing 64 bits, this will add up to become in microseconds. And that is, uh, uh, that's a lot of uh, time. So now, this is what I had. So we had how fast is ripple carry. This is the discussion which I have just made. Uh, and then high speed adder. One of the way of speeding up the adder is to predict the carry look ahead. Let's look back here. Uh, if I look at C4, C4 is a function of A3, B3, and C3. But C3 is a function of A2, B2, and C2. But C2 is a function of A1, B1, and C1. And C1 is a function of A0, B0, C0. Now, C0 is the input the first carry into the into my adder and usually it's a zero so if i can find my c4 as a function of a3 b3 a2 b2 a1 b1 a0 b0 c0 
So all of these are variables which exist. These are ones and zeros. And you can do the design of C4. You can find the, what is the circuit required to generate C4 at right from the very beginning, as soon as you have all these inputs, and you do. And you can find the C3 if you are interested in C3 uh, at any point of time. The C3 is, you can find it as a function of A2, B2, A1, B1, A0, B0, and so on. And of course, every S is a function of A1, like S1 is a function of A1, B1, and C1. But C1 is a function of A0, B0, and C0. So all the sums and the final carry, which I don't care really about the final carry anymore, all these sums, are nothing but a function of all inputs from A0, B0 to A3, B3, and the initial carry, which is the C0. So I can regenerate or reorganize my output functions so that it depends only on available inputs, which are the uh, digits from A, A and B, as well as the initial carry from external circuit. That's the idea here. So here what we say, predict the carry. That's why we call it carry look ahead. I can see what my carry is going to be at, uh, at, at the end. So what if I was able to perform? Let me increase the size so you could see it. That's the code. What if I was able to perform the add as soon as the binary integers are available? Okay, my binary, which, is, which are the A's and the B's and don't have to wait for the carry to propagate. All I need the carry for is because I need the carry to be included in my uh, the calculation of my S. This means I should be able to perform the addition in 100, for example, plus if, if uh, the, the uh, stage is uh, 100 uh, uh, picoseconds, plus some picoseconds, just uh, some interval. So if uh, I have it 1 over 100 picosecond, it's 1 divided by 100 times 10 to the minus 12, which is equal 10 to the minus 10, uh, which is equal 10 to the 10 megahertz. So if I have, so if my clock speed is 10 gigahertz, that's what I'm trying to see, which means I can clock my my input at the rate of 10 gigahertz, then I can do 10 billion adds per second as much as there are hertz. With every hertz, with every clock uh, cycle, I can do one add. So I can do the, and that's, that's a big, big performance improvement. That's why I said, what is, uh, Uh, is my 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 muted? No, my mic is not muted. I just want to make sure am I recording because last time I forgot to record. Yes, I'm recording. That's good. So the the whole idea is if I can do a look ahead. Question: Can I do it? Theoretically, I can. Let's see how. So it is a great improvement over the ripple carry addition, which can do at most 312 million ads per second, as we calculated last time. So the between 10 billion and the 312 million, that's how much? It's about three times 10. It's about 30 times faster. I can do my addition if I can, if I can design my adder to be, uh, uh, to be able to look up my carry before before I uh, uh, I calculate the carries. I don't need to carry the carries, so now I can do my uh, uh, high-speed calculation. So our hardware technology people, they can make clock speed as high as they can. So we don't worry about the clock speed. Like today, we have speeds 
3 gigahertz of CPU. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you guys see all my slide here? Let me see here. No, probably this one is not. Let me do something. Okay. I think now that's better. So my critical conclusion here is that all our advancement in high-speed computation relies heavily on how fast we can add to binary numbers. Uh, actually, yani, uh, it sounds too good to be true, but it's a fact. Because in order to perform uh, your computer to, to be a supercomputer or high performance, it can uh, cope up with all the activities that go inside your computer. Like today when you have uh, your Google uh, is there, your Google map is running if you are in the car. Uh, you have back-end applications that are running in the, in the, in the, in, uh, in the back-end of your uh, system. And if you open, as I think I did last time, let me share again one more time. Let me share my screen, all of it. So with this, if I do my control alt delete here, and I see the task manager, you could see it on my computer kind of coming up. Look at this. Uh, this is, see the time consumed by the CPU. My zoom is 20%, 19 desktop, Zoom starting host, Windows audio, uh, and all of these, look, all of these here, processes running in the back end. I don't see them, but they are actually running. Now they are consuming, some of them are 0% of the CPU. And this zero is not really a zero, because uh, actually uh, it's almost, let's say, a fraction 0 0.9, 0 0.8. This is rounded to zero. But if we wait a few seconds here, we will see that this comes up and start doing some service. And also it's consuming memory, uh, this much memory, and consuming hard disk space. But we are worried about the C CPU. 56 or 52 or 39, see this, the CPU percentage being consumed and it keeps fluctuating. Now you will see it will go into the 50s, maybe in the 60s, 57, 56, et cetera. That's, that's how much computation in, in the back in the background. And this computation, all of them consume CPU cycles. And all these CPU cycles, all of them, without exception, when they go to the CPU, they use one and only one device. And that device is the adder. And this adder is going to add numbers which are in binary. And from the adds, you know, let's say if you are doing summations, you are adding uh, million numbers. If you are going to the database, you are computing an address, you are adding numbers to numbers to find the address. Uh, so all of these computations eventually require something in the arithmetic unit uh, and in the logic unit, but the arithmetic unit is major one. So that's the idea. So if we if we improve the performance of my adder, just like we uh, I mentioned a few minutes ago, I am improving the performance of my computer. That's my critical conclusion here. All our advancement in high speed rely heavily on how fast we can add to binary numbers, because all operations, the operation add is the core in all our adds, subtracts, multiplies, divides, twos complement, ones complement, and so on. Now this is 
uh, one way of uh, speeding up or at least organizing our ALU arithmetic unit, where what we do is uh, We divide our number, let's say if my number is 64 bits. So what I if I can design my 16-bit adder, here small, and 16-bit and 16-bit, I have four adders instead of one adder. And uh, for these, 16-bit adders plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 that's 64 so what we do we design this small adder this can be of course within it uh, a ripple carry or it can be a look ahead carry as i will explain in a second but nevertheless the organization of a 16-bit carry adder uh, where i feed 16 bits from a 16 bits from b and a carry in from the previous uh, operation. And the next one is 16 bit. And here, so this is the, all of these are done in parallel. So I have just added numbers. I added numbers. I added numbers. One, two, one. do I have four here? One, two, three. I should have one more here. And this is a selector or multiplexer, which is going to, uh, it has uh, a select line. This can be, uh, that can come from here. The select line, it selects, let's say, and this can be four bits. It doesn't have to be from the adder, it can be from anywhere else, from any control. So the control first, when this is ready, it goes out and then it goes out through the multiplexer so you can do four different ads if you have so this is going to be bits from uh, 16 to 31 these are uh, this is 0 to 15 16 to 31 and then uh, this is 16 to 31 Oh, I think this should have been uh, 32 to more. This is should be 32 to 47. And then you will have the last one from 48 to 60 uh, to 63. And this is how the system is organized. If I have these 64 bits, 64 bits, the same thing, 64, 64, and then I have multiplexer that can uh, choose one out of these four. And here I have all these registers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight registers. Each register has 64 bits. So uh, at any point of time, these guys will fire. So I can add, uh, uh, this is 8 times by 2 these are 4 numbers I add them at the same time I add A plus B C plus D, E plus F, G plus H assuming that I am adding many numbers like I'm adding 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th let's say I have 1000 numbers to add like in uh, the summation so if I will do uh, a summation type of thing just to show what we uh, do in this case sum of n numbers which looks like this uh, what do I insert here uh, symbol and my symbol I want the sigma you see where I can get my sigma here here so summation of uh, let's say a i plus b i 
for i equals one so let's say a million assume i'm adding one million numbers and of course this is today with the video rendering and the image uh, processing with very uh, high uh, uh, high pixels high number of pixels you can easily have to do a number one million plus one million numbers so if this is the case so these million if you want to add these millions one first plus second plus third plus fourth etc you will need to have one million ads and those one million ads if we for 64 bits when we said the million each ad is uh, so let me do this quickly so if i say one single ad requires let's assume one microsecond so million ads require one million uh, ads which is one second so it takes you one second to do all this million computation now <clears throat> you could say well one second with one million computation with one million ads plus some overhead could be a few milliseconds that's not big deal but in if you are running a very large matrix addition for pixel processing this can end up in in hours and that's what or minutes that's why when you have when you process very large images you could see that it's taking a good amount of time so in our case in our case here uh, with four complexed adders you can divide this one million divide by one or one million sorry divided by four it's going to be 250,000 ads and the time will be 250 uh, from the second 250 milliseconds instead of one second and that's that's a good improvement. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is just to show the significance and why we need these high speed adders. And even this simple design, all you need is just to have extra registers, which is hardware, which is one time addition to your system. You have more registers. If we had it only two, we are adding two numbers. All you need is two registers A and B. Now you have, you need eight registers for uh, number one, number two, number three, number four. Uh, these two, four numbers, you need these eight registers. If you have, uh, let's say, 16, you want to do 16 numbers, you need 32 registers. Yes, registers are very expensive resource, but uh, since you pay for them once in your computer uh, and your saving in terms of time is huge, uh, this can be uh, justified. That's what computer architects and systems, they justify that by saying, look, I'm paying for my registers once. Yes, it's uh, they are expensive, but uh, if I'm reducing my time, my computation time by a factor of four, or eight or 16, then it's worth it.
So in general, any output where fairy two bit adder can be evaluated as a logic expression in terms of all 65 inputs, which are 32 bits plus 32 bits. That's 64 plus one bit from the carry. The number of levels of logic can be reduced. The levels, I mean by logic, by log n, and the level of logic, every level adds up one computation interval. Okay, so the ripple carry has n levels, and then you can reduce the uh, your computation time by log n. If n is 64, the log n is going to be 16. Uh, is it? No, log uh, 64 log n, 2 to the power 6. So by 6 times, you can reduce your time. More gates are needed. Okay, uh, this is true. And the fastest design is known as carry look ahead adder. But here, I just mentioned more gates are needed. Could be also some more registers. But this is one time investment into your computer system, which is not big deal. You can afford that. Okay. So now let me go into the uh, carry look ahead adder and see how we can do that. This is the again. That's my four bit adders, A0 to A3, B0 to B3. Now, why did I switch these? I think this should be the A3 and this should be the B3. Okay. And the question which I have already mentioned, can I generate output using these nine inputs only? And these are the inputs. The initial inputs to my circuit is four A's, four B's, and the C, which are total of nine, four plus four, eight. Here are my eight inputs right here. Is my cloud thing. That's not the one. I think it's for the so these are my inputs and this one of course this is zero. Can I generate my sum? S1, S2, S3, S4 using these A's and the C0? Or do I need all 12 inputs? These are the 12 inputs. These are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. C0, C1, C2, C3 plus 8 inputs. Do I need them all? Using the repel carry, we need all 12 inputs. Sure. And some of these inputs will not be available. There has to be synchronization. I have to wait on uh, S1 to finish before C1 can uh, can be generated. So there is a time lag here. Now we can use what is called carry look ahead adder and utilize the eight, these eight plus one. Now let's see. Here is, I am changing now my design. I said, here is my full adder zero. Here is my S0, that's my carry one, that's fine. That's my input C0, the initial input here. Okay, so this is my C0 goes here and also And also, it I, I feed it here to, I say, carry look ahead one. 
it's the same function for this C1. It's a function of A0, B0. Okay, and let me move this back here. Okay. So this is my A0. It feeds up here and it feeds uh, down here. Okay, and and we also will uh, feed into the next one. So if I have A0, B0, and I have C0, then I have this carry look ahead one, and this is the same as C1. So if I will do what is C1 here, C1 is A0, B0, plus A0, C0, plus B0, C0. So this is the So my carry look ahead one, which is this one, is A0, B0, or it is A0, C0, or it's B0, C0. And I have all of them, so I know what C1 is. So in S0, this S is A0 exclusive or B0, or it's A0, B0, C0. Here, or should be A0, B0, C0. So here in this in this S, I can design my function. So if I take this circuit, duplicate it, I don't need these now. I don't need this, don't need this, just want to make sure I can design my proper circuit. I don't need this, this is not in the picture. Okay, and I don't need this. So I'm just talking about the first stage and the C1. So with the, uh, 
with my design here, my uh, my S0, this is my S0, it is A0 or B0, and I can bring it from my previous design, I can use my exclusive OR and my and I can borrow them makes my life easier here ah why this is not like that I need my exclusive OR Okay, so my sum, my adder, as a zero, and a b zero, My B, B0, that's my A0, and I have an OR, an AND gate here, which has A0, B0, C0. One more. A zero. B zero. And C zero. So that's my end gate, and these the output of A0, this exclusive OR and AB0, I can combine them with this OR gate here. Like this. And One more. Okay, so I order these and then I have an output. And this is my S. My S zero. Okay, so with the with these inputs, I do have my S zero, and I have my uh, I have my S zero, which is a function of A's, B's, and C zero. Now let me see this function now. Now I don't need these yet. I have them written somewhere else.
Oops. Bring this down. Now I want to show my C1. C1 is A0, B0, or A0, C0. There are two OR gates and three AND gates. So I have one AND gate here. That's one. That's two. And I can reduce the size here and move it here. One more AND gate. And I have one OR. And this AND has the That's A0, this is B0, that's first end gate. Actually, I can reduce the size of these so I can control my system better. Take this out, take this out. One, so I can make my paragraph and then one more. Okay, so A0, B0, A0, C0, B0, C0. And all of these are ORD together. Or this. Or this one. And this guy, or this, and this guy, or this one. And then I have this. Now this is called C1. So so the C1 here which I have it here it is this one. And this whole thing I will call the carry look ahead one. And this is how I will represent that like this. And no fill. Okay. Well, carry look ahead one. So this whole circuit is what I call the carry look ahead one. Now this carry look ahead one has three AND gates and an OR gate, so I can compute these. And it has two stages, but these stages are only uh, logic gates. It depends on the propagation of the uh, gates here in the AND and the speed of the links here, which is tied directly to the OR gate. So this whole 
circuit, the the computation time of it is uh, less than the computation time of this guy when it's fed here because this has to wait on clock arrivals. This is pure logic, no clock. I already can compute the CLA1 as soon as the A0, B0, C0 are available. And then immediately the C1 is only one, one OR gate away. So that's the C1. Now let's look at the C2. If I take now uh, from here, I want to take the C2 now. I want to compute the C2. And let me do the uh, slide, duplicate the slide as I did. I will just keep, so CLA1, which has these gates, it has the S1. I already have the S1. I don't have to wait on anything else to get the uh, some bit of one. I want to see the C2 now. How would this be? C2 will take its input. This is CLA2 from A1, B1. I could have said C1, but I don't need C1. I need A0, B0, and C0. So that's CLA2. And uh, when I, this is it, this is it. So, so let me cut this guy. I don't need this. I don't need this. Don't need this, don't need this. Neither this. And also, I don't need this now. All of these are not needed. Now I have C0. I computed my C1, my CLA1. Uh, I don't care about the FA1. Let me take it out of my way. Hmm. Uh, no, actually, I do need them. Okay. So my FA1 now, if I will write FA1, which is S1, this S1, what is S1? Uh, here is my S1, which I need. This is the function, and I need C2. This I, I have already done. And I have done C1, I need C2. I don't need these. And I don't need S1. So now, let me look at S2, which is a function of A2, B2, C2. A2, B2, C2. And if I look at it, this is A2 exclusive or B2. And uh, yeah, this is, where, is, where was my S2? Uh, what was this? A0, B0, and then all of these ended. So if I rewrite the... I want to write the function for S2, or S1, sorry. So S1 has... It's, I am adding A1 plus B1. So it is equal to A1 
exclusive or exclusive or B1. Or, so this is in parentheses, or A1, B1, C1. That's what this S is. S1 is A1, A1, B1, A1 exclusive or B1, or a1 ended with B1, ended with C1. So let's see how this sums up. So which is equal to this or A1, B1, C1. Now open the parentheses for C1. I already know what C1 is. I already know what C1 is from the previous, from here. That's what my C1. That's my C1. I substitute this here. So look, now S1 is, in order to compute S1 immediately, this is one. I need A1, B1 exclusive or, I need A0 ended with B0, A0 ended with C0, B0 ended with C0, and I need A1, and the, all of these ended with A1, B1. Yeah, so that's the, the uh, dynamic, of this guy, because that's what C1 is. C1 is A1, B1, this here ended with A0, B0, or A0, C0. Now, what is this? What do I need to compute S1? I need A1, B1, I have them. I need A1, B1, again, I have them. Uh, I have a0, B0, I have. A0, C0, I have. B0, C0, I have. So I have to design this circuit in order to get my uh, C1, my S1. Now, what do I need to get my C1 now? C1 in the previous design was A1, A1. B1 or A1 C1 or B1 C1 but which is equal to A1 B1 that's fine I have them or A1 C1 now C1 I put my C1 here that's my C1 Or it's B1, if you put it here, or B1, C1, which is the same as here, because that's what C1 is. So in the, in the C1 function, I have the A1, B1 all over, I have A0, B zeros all over, and I have C zeros. I don't have any notion of anything else. All of these are available. So I can take this, this function, and put it here, and make a design. Okay, 
So let's see how I can do my how I can do design my S1 and uh, C1. Let me put this on the side so it doesn't interfere. What do I need? Exclusive ORs, ANDs, and ORs. That's all I needed, which I have them here. So that's my exclusive OR. That's my AND, my OR. That's my AND. Bring them here, start using them. For this one, I need this exclusive or how many exclusive or I need? One. That's all the only one I need. Okay, so I would have it here. That's exclusive or. And I have the uh, exclusive or includes A1 exclusive or B1. Or, yeah, that's it. Okay. Now I need A1, B1. me make this smaller. Actually, I want to make this also smaller. my end gate I have one two one end gate two three four end gates one two three four that's one three and four and gates. Let's keep this four for a second aside. Uh, the first one, A1, B1. So let me do this. So this is one and B one. So I have A one B one here, and then I need A zero B zero. So I have A0, B0. Okay. 
Here I have A0, B0, A0, C0, and B0, C0. B. Okay. Now these three and gates are ended with the, with this one. I'm talking about here. A1, B1 ended with these when I order them. So I order these three gates. Take this one, or it here. And take this one, put it here. And take this one, or to this guy. So I have now, and all of these. So this is uh, is this right? No. So I need one more end gate. And this end gate come from A1, B1, ended with all of these. And of course, all of this is ORD with this guy. Output. from here so what do I have here s1 Let's look at again now. Oh, I'm sorry, S1. So this S1 is a function of A's and the B's, 0, A0, B0, A1, B1, A0, B0, A0, C0, B0, C0. That's it. The only thing from other than the A's is the C0, which is available right at the input of my system. So S1, I can compute it. I say, give me these inputs, A zeros and B zeros. I make this exclusive OR at the beginning with A zero, B zero. I use an four AND gates here to get my, this which should have come from the, my C1 with this OR gate, and them together. This is the function. Then all, all of this with the exclusive OR coming from here, you get an S1. So that's my S1. So the S1, and this should be S2, by the way. So, so far, I 
we click this. This function, I'll call it compute S1 using inputs A0, A1, B0, B1, and C. Uh, zero. So this is my carry look ahead adder with two full adder. We had the S0, S1. Now if I want to do the S2, like here, I want to do the S2 by the same token, I can do the S2 using the function of A2, B2, A1, B1, A0, B0, and C0. The C0 here. That's what to actually. I will do this because that could be confusing at a later point. Like this. And One more point. Okay, so that's more like. Now, what do I need to compute S2? This was S1. To compute S2, I, I, I said this is done. And to compute S3 now, uh, no here. Me make a new slide here. This is the S2 and this is the S3. So I will do from here. Compute S3 using A0 through A3, B0 through B3, and C0. Okay, so here S3 is going to be this F3, which is the function equal function equal C function actually equal C three so it's A three B three and the F three equal C three which requires let me do it this way
equals function of a zero through a three b zero through b three c zero. So I, I will compute S3 as soon as I have A3, B3, and I have A0, B0, all the way to B3, including this, and C0. And the function for that, this is the function. Uh, do I have the function? You can write, actually, I will ask you in a question. for the plus now I to ask the question compute function s n or an n bit adder using the carry look ahead adder technique. I want you to do this right now and submit it. I will put it an assignment now. Actually, I will do it in, uh, like a quiz right now. But this is what you should do. You will look at this, what I have done here. This is the S1. In order to do the S1, first, you will definitely need this guy. For the SN, you need the AN exclusive or BN. And then you will follow here. This will it's going to be your uh, A1, B1, etc., etc. And then it will be for the next ones will be A2, B2, and then plus dot 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 until you get A and B N. And A, A and B N will have uh, A0, B0, uh, A0. Uh, C0, B0, C0, and then all the way to the A1, B1, because you will have the next level, A1, B1, A2, B, uh, A2, C, A2, C0, B2, C0, and then you will get uh, the 3, A3, B3, and so on, for all this until you get to the 0, or to the N minus 1 level. Uh, if you do the S2 first, first do the S2, and then the the function for all the way to an n variable, it will be uh, it will be clear for you. So I will I will give this. Uh, I will open my assignments here. I don't. I have quizzes. I will add here with number one. 
and I will get it from here. I will say use only the inputs a zero to a m minus one a one to b m minus one comma c zero. These are the only thing that should come up in your function. Diamonds. Uh, require an access code. Uh, well, this one does not have submission. This one does not have submission. I want you to submit it as uh, a Word document or PDF. So, okay. Hmm, interesting. Quizzes are only online, only like multiple choice or something. It doesn't allow us to find a document. So let me change this, cancel it, cancel. I canceled it. Why is it doing this way? And I will go to assignments and I will put it as assignment. And this assignment, I will call it quiz. And I will do this. And it's 10 points. And it's file upload, unlimited. Do you? Now I will, uh, I will give you only one day for this, if you don't mind. If you need extra, uh, extra time, let me know. So I will, I want this to be done by, well, let's, we make it Thursday, and it's Im available immediately, and it's until Thursday, save and publish. Okay, so uh, this is assignment in the form of a quiz. You can actually spend the next 20 minutes or so. You can do it in 20 minutes. All you have to do is just make one more. Let me go back and emphasize this again. All you have to do is just do this for S2. Just go for the next level or the next level, which is this one here. Compute this S2 using a2, B2, and using for the uh, the C, instead of the C2, A1, B1, A0, B0, and C0. That's all you have to do. And once you can, you do that, then you can extend. You don't have to do the C3. You already know what C3 will be. You can practice it. And then you go all the way to N bits. And I'm not asking you to do the design like this one now at least okay it's going to be a four n bits four or four or four bits uh, 
it will be a little bit more, uh, you need more space at least, because it's going to add up in the same manner. An exclusive or at the beginning, some AND gates all board, and then you have an AND that combines all together and get you the S. And there will be more levels here. Okay, uh, do you have any questions for me, guys? Okay, if you don't have any questions, I will tell you what. If anybody gives me the answer uh, by, by today, today somewhere, maybe before midnight, before the end of this day, uh, you will get a bonus five minutes for this uh, quiz. If you start working at it right now, probably, it's fresh in your mind. You can you can do it probably in ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, that's what usually I used to give as an in class quiz, but now I will give you the time to do it. So let me know if you finish it. Just submit it, and I will see the time of submission, and you'll be good. Okay. One more time, any questions, I'll put it on my ear. Okay, have a good day. I need to go and take my medicine and get my... Um, professor, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um... It's about the assignment. I was wondering if I could get an extension. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, uh, for the the to write assignment. Assignment. Mm -hmm. Okay, the sure. Assignment. I will open it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank oh, you. Sure. Hello, uh, professor. Yeah. The uh, what is called went out in and out for me. I was wondering, um, what did you say? How long was the extension for the assignment? Yeah, yeah, I will give the extension to the assignment. I will give it to the end of this week. End of this week? Okay, thank you. Sure. 